Good morning, everybody. Okay, so we are on chapter 21 of the Captain Underpants um, in the preposterous plate of the Purple Potty People. So here we go. The anticlimactic chapter. The battle between man and beast was over. George and Harold petted Sula's giant face and breathed a sign of relief. He'll be okay, said George. He just got knocked out. Great, said Harold. It looks like all of our problems are over. Not so fast, said a voice that came from somewhere on the lower right hand corner of the page. It was Evil George along with Evil Harold and the ultra evil Captain Blunderpants. The terrible trio had been busy working on their preposterous plight, which is just a fancy way of saying that they were busy robbing a bank. Somebody's been messing with our giant attack hamsters, said Evil Harold. I think we need to teach those goody goodies a lesson. And I'm just the guy to do it, said Captain Blunderpants proudly. Instantly, the mood shifted. Everyone stood back. The air crackled with tension. The showdown of the century was about to begin. Captain Underpants would soon engage in a historic battle with his evil twin. Never before had our brave hero encountered an evil who was so powerful. Pound for pound, superpower for superpower, Captain Underpants was pitted against his equal. He had met his match. It was to be the ultimate smackdown, an all-out war, the brawl to end all brawls, the definitive clash between good and evil, a momentous confrontation of the most critical. Snap! George snapped his fingers and suddenly the horrifyingly evil Captain Blunderpants transformed into a friendly elementary school principal. A oh, man, cried Evil George and Evil Harold. We read your comic book back in chapter eight, said Harold. Did you think we wouldn't remember how to turn your evil supervillain back into a harmless principal? George and Harold quickly found some rope and tied up Evil George. Evil Harold and nice Mr. Crump. We're taking you losers back to your own reality where you won't bother us ever again, said George. All we have to do is dehypnotize and shrink Sulu and our job will be done, said Harold. Nothing can possibly go wrong now. You know, you really shouldn't say things like that, said George. Why, said Harold. So that was chapter 21. Chapter 22 isn't very long, so I'll go ahead and keep going, okay? So chapter 2 is called Kaboom. Suddenly, lightning flashed, thunder crashed, and the rain came a-tumbling down. That's why, said George. As the first few drops of rain hit Captain Underpants' pudgy face, he began to transform. In a matter of seconds, he changed from a confident, powerful superhero into an angry, annoyed elementary school principal. Unlikely, unlike wisely, the rain on the face thing was having the opposite effect on nice Mr. Krupp, transforming him once again into an arrogant, foul-tempered supervillain named Captain Blunderpants. Evil George and Evil Harold smiled their evilest smile as Captain Blunderpants snapped the ropes and yelled out a triumphant la la ta George and Harold quickly snapped their fingers again and again, but it was having no effect. It was raining too hard, and Mr. Krupp was getting annoyed. This is the dumbest dream I've ever had, he shouted. I'm going, I'm going to go home and get back into bed. And with that, he turned and stormed off toward his soggy toilet paper covered house. 
As you can see, they're trying to snap. Lots of snaps. Looks like the tables have turned, Evil Harold snickered. You guys haven't won yet, said George. Quickly, George and Harold leaped into onto Cracker's back, and the three forlorn friends flew off toward their treehouse. Don't just stand there, cried Evil Harold to his creepy cohorts. Let's get them. Okay, that's the end for today. See you next time. Bye.